This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and My Two Cents. What I wanted to address today in the wake of the Walt Disney Company buying the assets, this film studio and so on, of 20th Century Fox, I wanted to address some of the ridiculous claims that are going around on the internet. I received a tweet a few days ago essentially complaining of a monopoly as far as Disney buying the film studio of 20th Century Fox is concerned. And that's literally nonsense. Why is it nonsense, you might ask? Okay, I'll tell you. At the moment, there are five film studios. There's Universal Pictures, Warner Brothers, Sony, Paramount, and now the new entity which is composed of Walt Disney Pictures and 20th Century Fox. Five major film studios. And that's a monopoly. How? It's literally, it's not. It's, 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 it's a stupid hyperbolic claim. It's not a monopoly at all. Though keep in mind, the market share for Disney 20th Century Fox combination is more than the market share of any one of the other competing studios. But so what? Market share comes and goes. It's not monopoly. There are too many other competitors for it to be a monopoly. Would it have been better if 20th Century Fox didn't sell its filmed assets to Disney? From a competitive standpoint, maybe. But the thing of it is, if those assets are for sale, someone was going to buy them. In fact, prior to Disney making the deal, Comcast, owner of Universal Pictures, was also considering it. So, if the assets are for sale, someone was going to buy them. In fact, a better buyer would have perhaps been Apple, which is looking to get into the television slash movie sphere. And I think this is actually not a great move on their part not to have taken this. In any case, Disney now owns the movie assets of 20th Century Fox. And I think it's, it's not a great thing. As I've already said, I think that it limits competition somewhat. But it's not a monopoly. I don't think in the scheme of things it's really that big a deal. Now keep in mind though, this new entity will lay off some jobs, no doubt, because 20th Century Fox and Disney share a lot of things in common, other than film studios, certain processes and so on it will only make sense that there is some laying off of people and that really sucks but that's just inevitable and that's going to happen there's no way that these two companies can join together and keep all their staff that's just not going to happen and that sucks but that's just the real world it's going to happen the question is how many layoffs will come about As far as the movies go, the X-Men, as we know them, will not exist anymore. Those are the films guided by Simon Kinberg over at 20th Century Fox. And I thank the gods for it, because I think Simon Kinberg has done the X-Men films such an injustice for a start. And keep in mind, he may not have directed them, in fact, he's directed none of them. Well, to be fair, he had a hand in directing Fan Forsting, but that was only because Josh Trank just, that whole thing just went haywire and someone had to step in. So, Simon Kenberg directed some reshoots. But that being said, he's probably the most consistent thing at the Fox X-Men films. And they are so remarkably mediocre. And I think Marvel would do them a greater service. Why? Because Marvel stresses continuity. It's important to them. And anytime you're trying to string these things along, it makes sense to have that continuity of story and of character. Fox doesn't care quite so much. As a result, their movies, I think, are very uneven and not that good. The first X-Men, which is given credit for launching the superhero movie franchise thing. Quite unfair, I might add. Blade came before and was more, in my mind, instrumental to that happening. But in any case, first X-Men was good. It was what we hadn't seen before, except for Blade, which was better. X2, it was okay. It was a good movie. 
X-Men The Last Stand, not so good at all. X-Men Days of Future Past, it was a good movie, not great, and that Quicksilver effect was remarkable, but that's actually what I think people talk about, think of, when they talk about that movie. It's an okay movie, though not that great by any stretch of imagination. The less that's said about X-Men Origins Wolverine, the better, and that's a pity because that was a movie that suffered because of studio interference. Kind of like what's happening over at Warner Brothers with Justice League. So as you can probably tell, not a huge fan of the X-Men movies, and I think they would do much better under Marvel Studios, with their stress on continuity. This likely would mean that there would be less X-Men movies at any given time. Because the thing is, Marvel Studios doesn't want to saturate the market. Because you saturate the market, what you're going to do is potentially reduce potential outcomes for yourself. That's bad. I think at this point they're trying to release at least two superhero movies a year, give or take, and that's a good number. Keep it low, keep people wanting more, but don't deny them at the same time. It's a balance, and I think they're working well with that. So, there will be less X-Men movies. That needs to be said right off the bat. There will be X-Men that you are not familiar with, in the sense that it's going to be rebooted. They are not going to transfer everything as it was, including actors, to these new movies. That's okay. I think it needs it, frankly. So, they're accustomed to the current X-Men under 20th Century Fox. We really like them. Not long for this world. For instance, there will probably not be a Gambit movie. There will probably not be a Multiple Man movie. There will probably not be an X-23 movie. At the same time, certain movies that 20th Century Fox is producing with the X-Men are already in production. So, X-Men Dark Phoenix will likely happen. I've read in some places that they, wouldn't re they would consider not releasing that movie, which is frankly dumb. Why would you do that? That movie is going to cost somewhere in a ballpark of 100 to 150 million dollars. You expect Disney to eat that? That's just nuts. Never mind they spent about over $50 million on buying the assets of 20th Century Fox. They're not going to essentially just give away that much money. So the likelihood is high that X-Men Dark Phoenix will be released. It will be the direct debut of Simon Kinberg. So I expect this movie to suck. That being said, The New Mutants, which is done, will likely be released. And keep in mind, I hedge a little bit. I keep saying the word likely, and there's a really good reason for that. Because there's so many venues to release content these days. Disney's talking about coming up with their own streaming channel to compete with Netflix. And in fact, they're going to pull all their series. Well, I should say they're going to pull all their movies from Netflix, I believe, in 2019. So, they're always searching for content. Could these, so, is it possible that the content such as X-Men Dark Phoenix, such as New Mutants, could go to the new Disney streaming channel that they're talking about? I think that's unlikely, but it is possible. Those are certainly event movies, and they would certainly get people to at least try out the new Disney channel. But the changes that are coming about with the merger will affect pretty much X-Men fans, um, Marvel Studios fans, because they're, they're, right now they're getting back the X-Men, they're getting back the Fantastic Four, which means that this is likely going to alter their future plans to some extent. They're going to probably substitute movies, substitute X-Men movies, and substitute Fantastic Four movie or movies for movies that they've already charted out. And I personally don't mind, I think that's interesting. But at the same time, for people who are accustomed to their properties that are already there, that could be a little problematic. Overall, most people don't necessarily think of the label when they see superhero movies. I mean, they recognize the Marvel Studios opening, I mean, how can you not? But at the same time, they don't necessarily think, oh, this is from Warner Brothers, that's from Marvel Studios, and so on. They just think about superheroes. 
And those people will not be affected by this move at all, frankly. But for those of us who are really in the know about these matters and follow these things religiously, we're going to notice it. But I don't necessarily think it would be a bad change in and of itself, more so than just something different. This is BrianSpringFiles.com and my two cents.